All right. Um, this is State of Mind. And uh, if you like what you see, hit the little button okay, <laughs> and subscribe. And I, well, I want to say that I, uh, we're doing real well on, on YouTube and I want to thank everybody. So it's because you're hitting that little button. Uh, today I have uh, someone who I had the pleasure of, man, I'm getting emotional just talking about her. It's kind of trippy. Um, her name is Lily Melgar, and I met her on General Hospital. She's done, you know, film. I actually saw a movie she did. I don't know when it was, and I don't know the name. It doesn't really matter because <laughs> all I can say is she'll she'll bring up the name. But she's she was fantastic. Um, but the most important thing is that she played my fiance. <laughs> Your wife. Was it my what? That was your first wife. Oh my <laughs> God. That's the best. Okay, my wife. Your I forgot. first, the most important. Yeah, that's true. My first wife. And then the, she got blown up in a car, and it was a great storyline. I had the greatest time. And she was a trooper. And I want to talk more about that later because I, we need to ask some questions about that. So, anyway, enough is enough. This is Lily Melgar. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Maurice. Thank you. But you were a little nervous coming in. A lot nervous. Wow. But, a lot. But we kind of calmed you down. You did. You're all so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I love the setup. I feel at home. You got me emotional, so I'm already teary. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Uh, that's funny because you might not remember this. But we did a scene, and you told me afterwards, that's the first time I've ever shed a tear on screen. Well, you know, the, the, the truth of that is, you know, for a long time, it's interesting as an actor. The first, I'd say 20 years of my career, I pushed, I did mo most scenes trying to win an Emmy. <laughs> and I didn't have tears, man. And it was only until I let go and stopped that whole just just being in the moment. Now tears come down like a. I know. It, right. I mean, I've for, seen it for, exactly. But early on, so probably with you, there was a moment that the tear just yeah. happened. I'm like, wow. Yeah, it, you were so excited. Because it was almost <laughs> fake tears, maybe. I don't know. I would push too hard and this and that. Yeah, it was a scene where it didn't require it, and it just kind of happened. There so you there go. was magic, and then yeah. you took me aside and you shared that with me. And the reason that I bring it up at this moment is because that's what I'm experiencing now as nervous as I was I just lock in with you and I feel safe so yes thank you for that. that's the, the the beauty of uh, being able to connect and trust and the whole thing no but I have a question for you uh, yeah that I want to ask yeah because of this show in your experience what do you think do you think that um, mental illness has increased or decreased? Great question. Well, it's increased now because of the pandemic. And why do you think that is? And let me ask you, because you might think, well, that's obvious, Lily, but not necessarily. I think that the pandemic offered a huge opportunity for people to grow and settle and ground and really be with yourself and uh, I understand that for most people that's very uncomfortable and can put you into a depression but I also think it was a beautiful opportunity to really do the work and sit still and see what's going on with each and one of us making it an opportunity to heal do you want to sit here and then let me sit over there? I'm just saying because you're this show but you're is absolutely state right. of mind. You're absolutely right. So I want your take on um, it. I, I will say this. Because of what you're saying, you're absolutely right. And my book, <laughs> uh, would I believe, and I've been told this, and I think I had this conversation last night, it would not have done as well if it wasn't a pandemic. 
I just don't think so. Mm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I think because of the pandemic, it sold more books. We were locked in. And so that, a lot of what you're saying is true. The problem is, and I'll only speak for myself, did I hit the mic? No? Is whatever you're going through, like, well, you know, I, I, I say this story a lot, but I'll tell it again. I had, was dealing with my mom and dad, and then my wife comes in and says, honey, you're going to be off GH for a month. Not a month. You're going to be, they're shutting down GH. And you're, we're not going to be able to go to New York for your book. And pretty much, it look, looks like it's close to the end of the world. So, She's just, no, no, but I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know. I'm like, Paula, come That's on. what I heard in my head. Right. So what happens is it compounds whatever you're feeling. Right. Now this, and that's what happened to me. So my anxiety became, as you know, because I love you for that. We had a lot of conversations. It became deadly. Hmm. Like I've never felt in my life because everything <sighs> just it's, you know, something you, we've never felt in our lives. Never. A pand, you know, this coronavirus. And it's, a, now, what was, what was not great, but what was funny is I'm going through this hell and my family's having the greatest time. Wow. Because they're playing games. Yeah. They're running around. Yeah. They're doing this and this and yeah. that. So, um, but I love that question because it's, it's, it, it, it's kind of a twofold, right? It is. But uh, as for overall mental illness, man, what, what I see in the last two to three years is a lot of suicides. A lot. You and, know, um, my ex-husband committed suicide the night before we were put on lockdown. But the pandemic had hit already or not? It had hit, but we weren't put on quarantine until the day after he took his life. So do you think he took his life because he felt he, he, couldn't, he couldn't take it? Um, no, I, I don't think that he knew what was coming because he wasn't living in reality. So he was not in his right mind. Mm. And that's very, very difficult to accept because I think, first of all, suicide is the most difficult thing to accept from a loved one. It, it just is. Uh, it's so shocking to the system. When it comes to suicide, you're trying to get rid of the pain. And what people don't understand is that pain is enormous. Mm -hmm. I saw it. You saw it, yeah. It's awful. It's, it's, it's gut-wrenching mm -hmm. pain. It's like, and as, as, a, as a, the way I've felt a few times in my life is I can't live like this. I can't keep going. How, how long do I have to go? But the reality is you can get through it. You truly can get through it. I've done it many times. Right? You have to be willing. Yes, you have to be willing. Hopefully you have people around who, who love you. But I, like I've said before, even, even in, my, in how beautiful and great my wife is, Paula, four months of, of what I was feeling, I could feel her going, but she's always cool. <laughs> mm. She's always cool. It's like, honey... You're going to be fine. And I'm like crying in the corner going, I don't think so, honey. I don't think so, honey. Honey, you're going to be fine. You know, for four months of that. It, it, but but the, the reality is, and I'll say it again, because I, I think it's the greatest thing I've heard being mentally ill. When my wife said to me, a hundred times you've said you can't go on a hundred times you've gone on. I think 
and it'll be interesting to see what you think about this, but mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes people are addicted to being in pain. Mm. I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, not me. Not you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm scared of pain. Mm -hmm. But yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who, who like living in that, yes. in that, in that stuff. Yeah. They like it. And they, that's a huge problem because then the only way you're going to get through it, as you've gotten through it a hundred times, is by dealing with it, facing it, doing but, the work, yeah. whatever it is for each individual and each individual's issue. But you can't when you're not in your right mind. Yes. But, but it's so much easier to yeah. find the escape. Yes. And they don't want to... They don't want to feel that silence. They don't want to feel... They don't want to uh -huh. feel that thing. You have to. I know you do. But when I was... Forget the mental hospital and the whole thing and all that. Just recently, I like to talk about things that happened recently. Uh, I don't do drugs. I don't do... Uh, uh, I don't drink. So I was having to be in it. But you got to. But the, but, but the way you can feel you can do that is you will get out of it we think we can't really that's the problem but you will and that and and that's the hope like i say in that tunnel of pain that dark tunnel of pain you got to just get through that that tunnel and then the, the the light will hit and it's also really being conscious that you are not your emotions somebody just said yes that to me recently yes and I, and it really connected for me because so much of my day is affected by my emotions yes and, and you're very emotional i am I'm very empathic too i feel other people's stuff yeah. that's why it was really hard to be married to someone in pain yeah it's like, oh my god no stop please yeah oh it was really draining um because i do have a lot of compassion and and, and i do feel other people no I, i'm just Here's what got me th through my thing just recently. I don't remember the other times. So it wasn't as bad as it was this time. Is, of course, your family. But I'm not going to lie to you. I am not going to lie to you. The reason that I wasn't, I got it out of my head a bit was because I felt being the bipolar mental illness guy, if I did that, what would that mean to everybody? You have a responsibility. Yeah. And you've taken it on. Yeah. yeah. And and how could I Yeah. And then it's like that. So mm -hmm. all right, let's go to the You gotta walk the talk. <laughs> exactly. So you know, I've been asked a lot about how it impacted my daughter and myself. Oh yeah. In the sense that this happens and then we're locked up. Oh, man. You know, she can't go to school to get uh, distracted. I can't go and I love distractions. Yeah. Can't, can't do any of that. Oh. But for me, as painful as it was, because you need to understand that we had a really chaotic divorce. He made it yeah, unnecessarily yeah. chaotic. <laughs> and then he does that and I... I I had so much anger at him for doing that, for knowing the impact it would have on my daughter more than anything. And then five to six weeks later, my dad's diagnosed with leukemia. Wow. And we're on lockdown, and it's not like I can go visit him and hug him and snuggle with him. Yeah. And all the things that we would have done wow. under any other circumstance. Yeah. We're a very loving family we're very yeah, touchy-feely um that was hell hell i can't Not imagine to be able to hug him as you're watching him my so he was living somewhere else obviously my dad lives in downey with my mom and then you guys couldn't no we were on lockdown so this happens a week before no no robert took his life march 12th of 2020 my dad was diagnosed four to six weeks later oh. um, at Cedars 
And then five and a half months later, he was gone. Oh, my God. My dad worked out every day of his life. Like, I wish I had his discipline. <laughs> I yeah. I really do. He worked How old? out... Um, 76, 77. Um, I think it was 77. Anyway, great shape. You know how when you start getting older, some people start getting like yeah, this? Yeah. No, my dad was like, you know, just great shape, really. Yeah. Really, just that was so hard to see your fit, healthy, handsome dad wither away into bones. Like, it's so cruel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was such a trooper. He, such a trooper. He really um, he had such a great attitude. If it's my time, it's my time. I've lived a good life. Yeah. I'm proud of my family. Um. But seeing his body wither away was the hardest thing for him because he had taken such good care of it, you know? So you, that's a ton to go through. Fuck. That's a ton to go through. I couldn't properly heal from the, the suicide impact when I already had to deal with that. And the same with my daughter. All the men in her life yeah you know because her biological father is not in the picture i don't even know if you know that story that's not something i want to talk about right now um wow so to her my ex-husband was her daddy and then her grandpa her tata and now it's like okay so but think about how strong you are That's it. I mean, you, you... I don't know if I'm strong. No, no. I think I'm resilient. But you're all those words combined. To have to go... Th Look, that's how we have... You know, we all go through our own things and this and that. But what you went through to your ex-husband and your dad, and you're here talking about it. It's painful. But you're, you're, you went through that. That's how you have to see things now, that you are superwoman. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it doesn't feel like that, but trust me, I, I'm not even going to go there where, what, what, I, what I would do if that happened to me. <laughs> but, you know, on the, on, on the positive side, I do think I was so... My whole life was turned upside down. By more than anything, my dad passing. It's your parents are your foundation. Right. And that was the one man in my life I could always I count on. I know that. I know that. So to have that taken away, it really made me feel so unstable. And um, I'm so grateful that somehow in my life plan, the universe orchestrated it where I could have this lifetime out while the whole world was going through it. Mm. Because I would not have been able to function. Mm. If there was no quarantine, I would not have been able to work. That's true. Timing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the timing of it allowed me to really sit with it yeah. Deal with it, go through it, and as life started opening up again, I'm finally okay yeah. to be here right now. Yeah, yeah. So I naturally always focus on the positive. Yes. But even with that being my nature, this was unbearable. I cannot tell you what it is to watch the strongest person your protector in life take his last breaths like you watch him leave his body mm -hmm. and you are so grateful that he didn't have to do that alone 
Yeah. But guess what? We're still here and we get to go home and we have those images. That's hard. It's trauma. It's, yeah. You have PTSD enveloped with gratitude. So it's, it's almost like you feel guilty when you feel, ah, when you get an image and it makes you feel so bad. You feel guilty because I don't want to feel bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to just feel grateful that I got yeah. to be there when my dad most needed me. But it's hard. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't want to take out the violin. No, no, but but, it's... but then my dog fucking dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? I, I really felt like that one felt like the universe just hit me below the belt. You know, like if you're in a boxing Jeez. ring, it was just a penalty. Like, no, you don't get to take my dog. And the dog left too? Yes. It, oh, God, no. no. But they're all in heaven. <sighs> they're all up there having, you know, I've lost, not nobody. My, you loved your cane like I loved my cane. Yeah, I love cane. Because my cane is the one I lost. But you had one you loved before that. Uh, no, no, but Kane was the one. That Kane was, was mine. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was the yeah. one. But I've lost like, you know, a lot of, you know, five people that I loved. Donna was the oh. last one. And I always say that in every death, there's a gift. And for me, you know, I remember when my, my friend was murdered, Manny, my best friend of all time. And I remember sitting outside, and there was these hawks, three hawks just flying. Oh. And I know it, it felt like Manny. And then when Donna died, I had a lot of strength. She mm. was always, ah, you know, yes. anxiety is nothing. Yes, yeah, she's so there. funny. And, so tough. Yeah. And, <laughs> and when she died, I, I didn't, I was good. She gave me that. So I don't know what. Your father is gonna give you, but you'll you somewhere you'll find that gift. And oh no, we 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 got it, and I won't go into a yeah. lot of detail on it because the show's not about that. But um, we actually had the most phenomenal gift given to us. He gifted us a session with a medium. Oh yes, and her name is Laura Lynn Jackson. And she's considered to be not only the best, not, when I say the best, I mean the most accurate right. in the country, but in the world, to the degree that science has deemed her legit and studied her brain to see what happens to it while she's connecting to the other side. Wow. It's the most fascinating stuff. And now science is actually studying the connection between grieving and mediumship and how people just come out so much better after it there was so much closure and something happens when you know that we don't die right when you know that his spirit and his essence is still with us yeah, yeah. and better yet it's in a paradise where he's just having the time of his life and he's not in that body that was full of pain and he's he gets to be with us at any time. And that, knowing that is the most healing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still miss him. Yeah. We still cry. But Maurice, the pain is gone. It was so painful. It, I would wake up in the middle of the night having flashbacks of his last moments. And... I could not go to sleep. I've never gone to sleep with the TV on because the radiation and I don't Dude, do that. Dude, that's all I do is go to sleep with the TV on. I don't do that. But I had to because I couldn't be, and I'm somebody that loves to be alone. Like, even in a marriage, don't be that needy dude. But you don't have any mental illness, right? I don't think no, so. No, but that's, that's actually great. But. but I have experienced depression this yeah, past yeah. year. Yeah. Absolutely. Insomnia, yeah. depression. That's the, that's the worst. But I don't have um, high levels of anxiety. I, I don't have that. No. Um, it was mainly trauma. Yeah, Be well, trauma is going to affect you in, in so many different ways. But sleep is very important. 
Um, depression will hit, especially after something like that, because you're grieving and things like that. But uh, and it makes you think of your own mortality. I know, I know. Uh, so much, so much, and it's not it's something I had ever really given any thought to. Yeah. I'm really good at living in the moment. Yeah. And that again, it just turned my whole life upside down, because even after a divorce, which is a lot on its own, let me yeah. tell you. So it's been two years because the divorce was not easy. So dealing yeah. with the divorce and that's then a, that's a ton. It is, and yeah. then his suicide, and then yeah. watching your dad wither away, and then watching him leave, and then you're like literally the only protector I had left was my badass red doby and then he leaves me too <laughs> poor dude all right let's get into something else now yeah uh, i want to talk about gh um you started gh and it must have been very difficult for you to come in and try to i don't know break up a, a sunny and brenda well, I didn't come in to do that. <laughs> oh, they, they kind of worked it in? Well, thanks to you and I being so great on camera together. <laughs> Me secretly wishing. Uh, oh, but, no. it, but it's difficult to, because uh, I've been with so many now actresses trying to break up with, you know, and yeah. it doesn't, nobody, nobody, my, the fans are like my mother. Mm. Nobody's good enough for my son except... Brenda and Carly, but we, I mean, that's, a, you know, it, the majority. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, yeah. it's, but you came in and then Ricky, mm -hmm. Ricky Martin. Well, we came in together. Oh man. I forget everything. Yes. What yes. happened? So you guys came okay, in. Quick story. Let me just tell you, and I'm sorry if you guys have already heard it, but it's a great story. You know that I wanted to work with you when I saw you play Desi Arnaz. Right. So my, I don't know why, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I did. And <laughs> so you're so hard on yourself. Yeah. Anyway, my two dreams in life were to be on General Hospital, and then my second dream was to work with you once I saw you as Desi. And I was mesmerized. I was like, <laughs> I have to work with this guy. <laughs> so I get on... I go to see my friend, Ricky Martin, because my career started on Univision as a VJ. Right. So I had this music show, and I met Ricky years before that because I went to Puerto Rico to cover him for a whole weekend for my show on Univision. Became best of friends. Always, He was in L.A. We'd always be hanging out. So, of course, I go see my friend at his concert, go to the VIP. Right. I was there. Exactly. I just talked about this in an Vanessa interview. Vanessa was there. Yes, and Wally and Rena and Wendy Rich yeah. and Shelly. And... I didn't know who they were, but I knew who you guys were. And I was like, oh, my God. I was so starstruck. Right. And it's so funny because most people are, feel that way about Ricky. Right. But that was my buddy. But you guys, to me, were like, oh, they're on the show I want to be on. <laughs> and as, you know, fate would have it, Wendy Rich said, who's that girl? And I had just signed with Ricky's agent. He said, oh, I just, she's a VJ on, but on Univision, it was the highest rated show, now I brought her on. He's like, well, I have to have her. So then he put together a little get together for all of us, and I don't think you were there. And then Wendy and Shelly sat me down, they said, we were going to bring you on as the sister. But your guys' chemistry, no. We're oh. going to bring you on as lovers, no, for me and Ricky. Oh, you and Ricky. So I think initially, when they were going to bring me on as his sister, they were probably thinking of me mm. causing some trouble with you. But that was delayed a year because they had me and Ricky's storyline. Oh. Yeah. Now, uh, Ricky, he was just so green. And I felt bad for Ricky because as a person, I loved him. But as Sonny, I had to be a jerk to him. Yeah. But I remember one time, but who cares? He was Ricky Martin, you know? Yeah. But one time, uh, he, he did a scene in Spanish, and he was scary good, man. He had a thing, and he was going to, and I, I was going to, or he was going to choke me, or he was going to cut me. I don't remember that scene. Oh, yeah, you weren't in it. And he's like, good luck, pass on it. 
And I said, wow. And I came downstairs and I said, Ricky, I'll never forget because it really moved me. I said, Ricky, I got to tell you, you were freaking incredible. Because he was having a hard time at that time. Yes, he was. So, but I said, in Spanish, in your own language. Here's a kid who comes in. He's got to do, he doesn't even speak English that well. He sings like a, you know, Elvis Presley, but, you know, it's very difficult to come in and do a scene with me playing Sonny as I this kind of mean dude, right? Yeah. And he, he, he had like a little bit of teary-eyed and he said, oh, thank you so much. He was so sweet, Aww. man. And it was like, those, uh, those are moments you, never, you don't forget. <laughs> do you want to know my Maurice moment? <laughs> oh, no, please. <laughs> So my first day with you, we oh, don't have... Don't tell me I told you something bad. No, my first day with you, we had five scenes together. And you, Wally, and Steve came knocking on my dressing room door. And you busted in and you were all welcoming me. Hey, we're welcoming you. And then you're all, you're so good. And you sat down and you're like, you are so good. Who did you study with? How did you learn those beats? And I literally said to you, what are beats? Uh, and you were like, oh shit, she's just a natural. You were like that. Cut to. Oh, no. So then we we go to Puerto Rico to shoot on location. And I know, I'm not even gonna ruin it yet. So then you, I don't know, we're all we're shooting, and then you said, Hey Lily, have dinner with me tonight. And I said, Oh, okay. So we went and we had dinner, and you said to me, So what's up? And I'm like, what do you mean? You said, well... I'm sweating. Some days, man, you are good. Some days, I'm like, I suck, right? <laughs> but you started cracking up because I said it. I go, I suck, right? Uh. And, and you're like, oh, you know. And I'm like, yes, I know. And I'm like, I just don't know what makes me... What's, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. on or what's off. I know when I'm good and I know when I'm bad. I just don't know how to gauge it. And you were so charmed by my honesty and that I didn't get defensive yeah, at yeah, all yeah. with you. And then I, we worked together. And that's when you said, But all you right. know, what's funny is what you just said is what Howard Fine said to me. Really? Oh, no. He kicked me out of class that I sucked. And <laughs> No, it was terrible. He loves me. <laughs> no, he's fantastic. But he, the problem that I had, because I hadn't learned technique yet, was I would be great and then I wouldn't yes. be good at all. Horrible. And that... Not you, but me. No, but me too. (laughs) So when you don't have technique, that's what happens. Yeah. When you have technique, you're always going to be consistently good at least, then great, but you're you're never going to fall here. All right, can I say... No, 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 no. No, no. What? I never answered your question, and it's important. What is it? I never answered your question. Jesus. We we detoured. So how was it coming in between Sonny and Brenda? Oh, yeah, because that was a... This might be all cut anyway. But that was, <laughs> that was, um, I thought that was difficult because I know people that, that do come in between Carly and then they're, they're gone. You, you actually m- made it something at least, but it's not easy because fans are, can be really aggressive. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. It was, I did, I had no idea idea what I was going to be dealing with because I was just so excited to be working with my acting mentor. Yeah. So I was like, yes, more time to learn, you yeah. know? Um, I loved working with you. So to me, it was just such a plus, but I didn't realize until one day I opened a fan mail <laughs> oh, no. and I put my finger in the thing and it poked me. They sent me something to poke. No. Yes. What it was it? And I, I had like little... I can't even think of the word in English, filitos, but like little spiky things. And so I went, ow! And I'm like, what the hell? Are they doing some brujeria on me? Like, what the fuck? They poked you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I didn't know what was in I've there. I've never heard that ever. Yes. That's and the, terrible. Uh, terrible. And they're just so mean. Even like, they'll even attack my looks. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, my looks like what it's so personal yeah they just go after you so hard 
And it's like, hey, I'm Lily Melgar. I'm not Lily Rivera. I'm actually yeah. nothing like her. Well, your first name's the same. <laughs> I know. And that happened because they wrote me in. Because they saw me in the VIP room of Ricky Martin's right. concert. And then Claire said, can we keep your name? We love your name. Damn. And I said, yes, as long as you spell it with one L. So there's a difference. Yeah. And that's why it's Lily you know, with one L. My, you know, my fans, are the, I think, are the greatest. And they've been so loyal from the beginning. And I love them. But there's some a lot of people hate me too, right? Because they're, they're, you know. But I always say it's good to be loved and hated as long as you're loved a little more. Yeah. That's kind of the way it should work. You, you interrupted my thought. What is it now? Ah, don't do that. There's I no, had a good you, one. You already, you already I had a, nailed oh, it. No, 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 no. Okay. I want to thank you. Oh, well, there you go. Now we can keep going. <laughs> I really, really, no, I really do. Because. When I had my first movie on the big screen, oh yeah, you were sick and you texted me and that said, "I'm was. so sorry, I'm not going to be able to go watch it because I'm sick." And the Maurice that I remember was never alone; he never went anywhere alone. So I don't know how you are now. Yeah. And then I get a text telling me how proud you are and how yeah. impressed you were with my performance and. You know, it's very special because you were such a part of my growth as an actress. But the fact that you were sick. And I was sick. And that you still went, even after telling me and me being okay with it, not saying, I don't care that you're sick, you have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still went and supported me. And that was so beautiful and meant so much to me. Well, on, so on, thank you. on that note, I, I want to say to you, this has been, you've... Uh, been so open uh, talking about incredible stuff that I, I'm telling you it will help a lot of people people that are you know that are grieving that go through things that think they can't come out of it you're a testament to that and it's it's it, you know because people I think with state of mind, there's a lot of, I've had a lot of men. And I think as women are scared to maybe open up, that's what I'm getting. I could be totally wrong. I think it's scarier for men. But for whatever reason, I've men, ha, you know, when I ask women to be on here, it's a whole. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm only giving you facts. Really? I find that so interesting. It is interesting. It is interesting. And I'm thinking. That's why I think it's so brave that you came on and revealed so much about what you've been going through. But women, uh, men, if I say, hey, man, come on, uh, no problem. Women have a bit of, because I think they're just, it's, it's a scary. Even though I make you comfortable and, I'm, and this is comfortable, I think, and it's interesting because you would think that men, Maybe if I were a woman, I don't know, interviewing a man. Maybe. Oh, that might, that might have something to do with it. Right? Yeah. And, and in this past year, I've also learned, I think, and I don't know if this is a female thing or a personal thing, but I feel like I, I never wanted to be the bummer in the room or the bummer in the friendship. So I always would have my best self wherever I went to lift the mood in every space I right. walk into. I feel like that's what I can offer. And really show up in the world when I feel like I can be an inspiration. And what I really learned this past year is that it's just as inspiring when you allow people to know not just the pretty stuff, not just the yeah, good times. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But when you share your pain it's true. and your struggles yeah. and... Um, everything that you've had to overcome, I think I'm now aware that that's just as inspiring. It doesn't, people don't want to just see and hear the happy stories. No, 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 no. That, that's why, you know, what, what happened here was, was I loved it. But, but, it's, but it is a, a curiosity for me to why not, a, you know, the women don't want to do it as much as the men. It's a, it's a, I think you nailed it. I, I don't think that every woman feels that comfortable and that safe with men. Yeah. There you go. So thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I'm, oh, God. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get Sergio over here to, to <laughs> stop this They're going to escort me out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, thank you. Can't wait to check this out. All right. We'll see you next week. Uh, that's Lily Melgar. I'm Maurice Bernard. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>